Well, it goes really back to when me and George at university together. So we met in about what, 2009, um, and then we kind of lived together through uni in halls and then in a kind of flat uh, for guys. And, and it was in our third year of uni, uh, around 2012, we started homebrewing beer. And what kind of started out was a, a cheap way to make beer for like 60p a pint, turned into us kind of getting really into beer and get really, then getting into like really American style beers. And um, then taking our beers and sort of taking them to student house parties and selling them there for like two pound a pint. Um, and from that, that kind of like set the seeds of the company because we realised all our friends really liked it. We'd take it to house parties and sort of sell out a beer and it's like, okay, well, there's maybe something we can make a business out of this. So um, when we left university, we kind of thought, you know, as most graduates do, like, what are we going to do next? It's like, well, we haven't really got any responsibilities. You know, now's the perfect sort of time to just like give a beer company a go. So uh, we managed to get a £10,000 loan from the government and the startup loan scheme. And now, kind of three and a half years later, we're selling 50,000 pints a month and in bars all across, you know, Greater Manchester and the north of the UK. So. Um, well, we've released probably about 15 beers to date. Um, so we've always got a few different beers we're always thinking of, you know, next in the pipeline, trialling out what's out there, getting inspiration from different flavours. Uh, so it's something you can see right there we've got the the, the pilot kit where we're, we're trialing new batches we're actually brewing on it tomorrow uh, a beer that we're going to be putting vanilla in so it's something we're always kind of thinking about yeah uh, it's amazing it's literally the most rewarding thing i think you can do job wise because it's it's well it's more than a job it's a lifestyle you immerse yourself in it and from that you get to you know it's, it's a job where you can be quite creative and you get to express yourself and you can kind of wake up with a spring in your step and you get to do a job you love. So I'd, I'd encourage anyone who's thinking about, you know, starting a business or getting involved in entrepreneurship that just go for it. Yeah, and it's not even a, at this sort of age, you know, it's not that much of a risk. You know, you don't, you don't have to throw money at a startup company. You can do it weirdly, which is like, spend a small amount of money to test what you're trying to do first. And then, you know, from that, you can say, okay, now we can start spending some money on the beer. Now I know it works. Like for us, we spent 10,000 pounds to get this small amount of beer into the market and get a brand done and stuff. And you know what, if it hadn't worked, it's 10,000 pounds. We haven't got a mortgage and a house on the line. It's just, you know, we just move on and get on with our lives. But you know, you can't, you can't know whether it's going to work unless you give it a go. And so for us, it was about doing it as cheaply as possible. And, then you know, further down the line at work, we'll spend some more money on it. Kind of just adding to that as well, you, you need to, there's, there's a bit of stigma in this country about entrepreneurship that it's seen as like, um, if it doesn't go well, it's seen as a failure. But really the way you have to look at it is it's like a constant learning process and you learn so much by, you know, trialling a new idea that even if it doesn't work out, you've learned so much that you're in a better position to do the next thing that you want to do. So it's like this constant, continuous journey of like personal development and growth and learning how to bring an idea to life. If something didn't work in one situation, you've learned from that failure for the next time. Yeah, so Michelin mean, Sessions is, is, is kind of, um, it's firstly us like providing a shop window for local, so like showcase local kind of talent, um, like especially from, like, well, in Manchester. So it's about bringing together um, like local artists, um, illustrators, street food, breweries, gin distilleries, everything together under one roof. The next one's on Saturday, the 20th of May, um, at the Antwerp Mansion, which is like a disused mansion over in Rushholm. And for us, it's kind of that coming full circle now. Um, yeah, we started selling a home at house parties and now effectively putting on a house party of our own. Uh, it's an all day party, so you're gonna be outside in the sun. Uh, music wise, uh, we've booked Nubian Twist, who are like kind of like an Afrobeat kind of band from, from Leeds, but they're coming over there and doing like a live DJ set with conga drums, live sax. Uh, we teamed up with Reform Radio, it's like a Manchester based radio station and they basically bring along some of their finest DJs, all kind of, it's going to be funk and soul, a bit of garage, a bit of disco and then the, the idea for it is basically it starts off in the day as kind of like a bit more of a chilled out, relaxed affair, you might sit down, have some food, catch up with some friends and as the night goes on it kind of evolves into you know a proper proper party and then there's going to be sort of like garage jungle people having a yeah, bit of a dance so you can get tickets for our event at antwerp mansion on the saturday the 20th of may from um, www.shindigasessions.co.uk and we're also going to give the keys news readers and listeners um, six free tickets plus one free pint of shindiga um, beer per ticket cheers cheers you good? <laughs> Super cheesy, I hate that.